What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. This, uh, if you've not been following it, is part five of a series where I compare different kinds of strops. I'm making denim strops, leather strops, cardboard, wood, and I've made them all really small sample sizes to figure out what I should load up my kangaroo and my nice flat leather strops and whether I should get some wood of some kind, balsa wood or basswood, but which compounds are going to work best on them is what we're trying to sort out here. So every time I profile them with a Spyderco Ultra Fine, and every time we tackle the um, largest best number that's registered on the knives with the largest abrasives, and we kind of go from there. I, I've been doing 10 passes on each strop. I'm gonna do things maybe a little bit differently today because I have just made these beautiful green chromium oxide strops. Very fun. If this works, then I will, you know, link you to the video with the instructional on knife grinders that I used to make them. Now, chromium oxide is not hard enough to cut carbide. Luckily, Victorinox knives have almost no carbide. But it is reportedly an excellent deburring compound. So we will find out today how it works on denim and cardboard. And once I've got my leather lined up, then we'll see how it works on flat leather. At the moment, I've got two plain. So this is plain chromium oxide and jeans. And this is plain chromium oxide on cardboard. And then I've also heard that you can mix little bits of diamond or CBN abrasive in with the chromium oxide paste. And it actually makes a great combo strop where it deburs from the soft chromium oxide, but then it actually will shape and not leave round carbides that aren't very keen or nice in the edge. Those will be shaped to more productive shapes apparently, sometimes, by mixing other abrasives into the mix. So I've got two micron CBN in this one. I've got one micron Veneve diamonds in that one, and I've got 0.1 micron gunny juice mixed into that one. These blades have been sharpened for the test, and those are the respective best numbers. So we will hit the 211 and the 201 on the plain chromium oxide to see if we can get them a bit lower because the softer abrasives seem to be working better for deburring, where the harder abrasives seem to work better once you have something of an edge to sort of hone the edge smaller. Because of that, this one that registered at 165 will go straight to the gunny juice. And these ones, I'll record how much they go down on the plain chromium oxide paste but they will go to the CBN and the one micron diamond respectively. Let's get into it. All right, all right, all right. I should mention that I've had a lot of feedback from viewers who are saying I should be using longer strops and doing more strokes and more motion back and forth. I'll incorporate that feedback into future tests, but for now I've already filmed the next one, so you guys will have to wait for my testing to catch up. The reason for the small size of these is just trying to get the best bang for my buck out of the materials I'm using, and because I didn't know. Anyway, this one has decreased by 29 grams, which is a pretty average amount for the chromium mixed with gunny juice. Next we're on to pure chromium oxide with nothing mixed into it on denim to see how it does with deburring. I should mention that throughout this test 30 to 35 has been pretty normal numbers and here we have a decently high normal number from the pure chromium oxide. Now onto the same thing with a cardboard substrate to see how it compares with the denim. In the past I've got less increases on the best from cardboard as it tends to compress a little bit less than the denim material, at least with diamond. But here we find that it's nearly identical numbers. 174, where the denim was 173. On to some mixes, we've got some 2 micron CBN mixed in in the denim. This is a high quality CBN oil-based paste from Veneve that I've really been enjoying and it takes the best down to 136 which is a decently high kind of average number 37 grams taken off 
Now we're on to pure chromium oxide mixed with one micron Veneev diamond. This is a particular mix that Vadim Krychak recommends de using for derooting a burr, although he would usually do so on a leather wheel at low speed on a Tormek. I have much respect for Vadim's work, and indeed here we find that it brings it down to 112 grams. The best reduction for this test in best numbers, but not quite the 96 grams we saw from the Mother's Mag on Denim. Some pretty good results. Yeah, all of the mixes with other abrasives were 136 and lower, which is better than the results that I've been getting so far with Diamond. We had two that matched the Gunny Juice and the CBN, both matched at 136. The Veneve 1 Micron Diamond mix brought the knife all the way down to 112. The plain chromium oxide by itself took both of the knives that were up at 201 and 211, both got brought down to almost the exact same number at 173 and 174. So very, very consistent results with the chromium oxide paste. It seems that the plain paste is good, whether on cardboard or denim, for basic deburring, but is not going to get you down really low it looks like, and it looks like there's potential for mixed abrasives to really give some cool results. Before I end the test, I will hit all of these five strokes on each side on kangaroo leather, and then a couple strokes on the fine side of the kangaroo leather, and then record how much lower they get. And it should be noted that I didn't realize until I was into this that the paraffin wax that's in these is still curing, and they were a little bit sticky, and loading a bit of material onto the edges of the knives, but I assume that when they dry fully and those abrasives are held in place more effectively without gunking up the edge, we'll actually get better numbers than this. So I think chromium oxide at this moment seems like a very valid possibility in the realm of my stropping, and I'm excited to see what it does on leather. Anyway, for now, let's get it on the rue leather and see if we can get those numbers even lower. <clears throat> One oh one, not bad. Okay, this one started also at one thirty six, but has gone through two refining steps. Fascinating. 168. So that one that was hit on the CBN actually went up on the kangaroo. Oh, I'm not sure why that was. Maybe I pulled the angle a little too high on the kangaroo. Fascinating. I do not know why. Anyway, last one's starting at 112. Hopefully it doesn't do that. One thirty nine. Interesting. So those two went up. So both of the edges, which had undergone two steps already, the ones that had been pure chromium oxide on something, basically the same thing happened. Two hundreds to mid one seventies. And then to one of them, it went all the way down to one twelve. And on the other one, it went down to 136. And then with extra kangaroo stropping, the numbers actually reversed and went up. I wonder if triple stropping, especially with a hanging strop, is actually too much and it kind of rounded the edge over somewhat. Because the only one that was only stropped twice, the gunny juice and chromium oxide paste one, 
went straight to 136 from 165 and then down to 101. I also though did work a little bit longer to refine the edge on this one and it got down to 165 where the other ones were at the 200s. So fascinating stuff. I think in general the kangaroo gave us some problems there at the end but the numbers for the chromium oxide seem quite good. I think I will probably have to tinker around with whether or not overstropping is a big risk. Oh my gosh, did any of those numbers... Oh, dang it. Those numbers didn't show. Well, you can see the last one. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, that was dumb. Anyway, I hope you guys had a good time, and I will say peace out from the home slice. Feel free to disregard those last kangaroo numbers if you didn't see them, and that's important to you, I totally understand. I will say, for those of you who maybe don't have a best machine or are watching this at home, you can lose track a little bit because 168 doesn't sound like a great number, but we're definitely talking like push cutting very well. And, you know, 139 is like curling paper like so. So just for some, just for some perspective, this is still working well. And even the 150s, you know, that the diamond edges were working really well as well. It's just that these 101 edges, it's like hard to get them not to cut. Like that was such a messy cursive cut. <laughs> anyway, it did tear there because the paper folded over, but. There you go. If you want to see the previous stropping video, I'll put it on screen now. And I'll, for all the rest of you, I'll just say peace out from the home slice. Take care, guys.